this time I will try to describe the principle of operation of a simple metal detectors in which data is processed by a smartphone. The main principle of this detector consists of LC oscillator which serves as a reference and on the other side a smartphone application which is basically a frequency meter. When we put a metal object near to the coil the frequency changes and the application detects the change and signalizes that there is a metal object near the coil. The oscillator consists of a parallel LC oscillator circuit and two transistors. Uh, the frequency of this oscillator depends on the inductance of the coil and capacitance of the capacitor. I also put trimmer potentiometers instead of a resistor so we can change the amplitude and the partial shape of the signal to make it easy to process in the smartphone application. Let's see what it looks what the signal it looks like on a oscilloscope. Uh, this is the signal received by the phone and we can change uh, his amplitude and shape with these two trimmers. Uh, as we see the frequency of LC circuit is about 8 kHz. With this potentiometer we can change the amplitude. And with this shape of the signal. I have experimentally found that the detector has the best sensitivity when the signal has an amplitude of about 100 millivolts and has a shape approximately as seen on the screen. When it comes to signal processing, let me mention that in this experiment I use the great applications of the Neko Desarolo team, Smart Hunter, which is this application, and MF M3 Pinpointer, which are on, uh, only Android applications of this kind in the world. You can download the free versions at the provided links. Specifically, in my coil consists of two Windix connected in series, the larger one with a diameter of 23 cm and the smaller one with 12 cm. Both are wound with lacquered wire with a diameter of 0.4 mm and contains 25 turns each. You can also make a custom coil with an inductance of approximately 500 micro Henry and you can easily calculate the number of the turns and the diameter with one of the online calculators. It is important that the resonant frequency of the parallel LC circuit in this is in the range of 4 kHz to 20 kHz so that it can be processed by the smartphone. We can read this frequency direct, directly on the smartphone application, in our case 8.1 kHz. By pressing the balance button, application measures the frequency and remember uh, it as a reference. With plus and minus buttons, uh, we can change the sensitivity of the detector. Now, if we move a metal object close to the coil, this frequency changes and it is displayed on the application visually and audibly on the speaker. To have an audio indication, I connected the power amplifier uh, to the output of the headphone jack. This is only headphone jack adapter. The change in signal frequency is clearly visible on the oscilloscope. As we will see later, the sensitivity of the detector is uh, relatively good, considering that the construction is extremely simple.
And now let's look at another very interesting application, MF M3 pinpointer. This is also a metal detector application that, that can distinguish between ferrous and no, or non-ferrous materials. When it starts, we can see the frequency of the oscillator. Uh, then we press the sync button and we can start scanning different materials. If we approach non-ferrous material, green color appears. And if we approach ferrous material, red color appears. We can notice that in the first case the frequency increases. And vice versa with the ferrous material decreases. Sensitivity can also be adjusted in the program settings. And now let's see in reality what is the sensitivity of this type of detector and at what distance it can detect different objects. The device is powered by one lithium ion battery of 3.7 volt and consumption is about 30 milliampers. This is non-ferrous material. And ferrous material. Finally, let me conclude that this is a very simple version of a metal detector, so it does not have any great sensitivity, but it serves well for educational purposes. To emphasize that, it's, uh, that it is very unstable, the frequency depends a lot of the temperature, so more frequent calibration is needed. In my previous videos, I have presented almost all the metal detectors by Neko de Sarolo, or their variations, so if you want to make one of them, you can watch them. In addition, you can follow the method of making this metal detector. 